Okay. Good morning. I'm glad to be here today. So thank you, uh, Morita, for introducing to the audience. So today I'm going to talk about uh, petty production in Northwest Cambodia, and we will explore uh, whether it is agricultural practice in in Northwest part of Cambodia. So agriculture actually is the is the the main. Uh, production of, of the country, it, it is called a backbone of economy of the country economy. So in the country, growth is providing about 60% uh, of GDP contributed to, to, the, to the economy. So uh, rice is uh, a major crop in the country which is the product is the uh, uh, cultivated areas about uh, uh, 3 million hectare in uh, 2015. So rice is mainly cultivated in the central part of, of the country, actually in the lowland area. So here's the the main uh, cultivated area in the country, and here is the the production and the, and the cultivated area increasingly uh, year by year, and the production at the moment can be uh, three ton per hectare, with the product uh, with the cultivated area about uh, three million. So it can be produced about uh, 9 million tons per year. So we produce, I mean, it, uh, uh, it can produce uh, uh, over what uh, domestic need and the other right can be exported to uh, other country like Europe or to other country in Asia. So last year we exported a half million of meal rice to abroad. So if we look at the, the soil quality in, in Cambodia, so organic carbon is, uh, is, is the, uh, considered as the, a low rate, so mostly less than uh, 3 percent. And however, there are some uh, organic agriculture introduced in the country, including project, uh, vegetable or rice or some fruit tree. So for the organic rice, there are some NGO introducing the uh, let's say, uh, agroecological practice. For instance, the SOI, the system of rice intensification, was introduced by uh, uh, SEDAC in 2010. And by, in 2000, sorry, it was introduced to the farmer in 2000. By 2010, there was about 130 farmers applied the SOI principle for their production. And there are also some other company who promoted the organic product. For instance, uh, Amaru Rice is a, a rice mill who export organic rice to, to abroad. But those are mainly uh, produced in, in the different area. I mean, uh, it's not a contribute uh, within the country. So, for instance, for farmers who produce for Amaru, mainly based in, in the northern part of Cambodia, and for farmers who apply SOI principle, mainly in the, in the south uh, east part of, of the country. And there are some recent uh, projects who uh, 
conducting research on uh, conservation agriculture, for instance, for Sirat, uh, uh, which is uh, funded for the EPECA project, was conducted some study on uh, direct dry uh, city based on the uh, like the stilo grass to to improve the soil quality, and there are some study in. Uh, Kampung Tom and also some in uh, in, in Patambong, where is the northwest part of the country. So, a practice of dry farming is uh, variously applied by the farmer. Actually, it uh, it located in different areas, then we can see different uh, practical of uh, dry farming. For instance. Uh, in the uh, northeast part, we can farm like the uh, upland rice, and in the central part, we can uh, find some SOI practice. And in the northwest part, which is uh, a bit larger uh, land holding farmer, so we will uh, explore how this area apply the. Uh, agricultural practice for practice production. So our objective for this study to explore rice farming practice and provide a preliminary estimate of what are the most important uh, predictor influence on uh, profitability of rice farming in uh, in Battambang. So the, uh, this is Battambang province where I'm from. So to explore our study, we interview 135 farmers uh, located in a uh, four uh, district in in Patambong province, and we interview what farmer uh, apply or what farmer use for their production, and we estimate the direct cost and also uh, estimate the value that they can uh, get from their production. So here is the result. We, uh, we found more than uh, 10 variety growing in, in this region, although the policy tried to promote uh, some variety, but we, we found some are not uh, uh, apply to to the the policy, which is uh, it, it could be a lack of extension, or some farmer could not uh, understand what the policy is going on. And we found the right is growing in uh, any location; it's not uh, depend on the location. And here's the yield that farmer can uh, can get. So in average, about uh, three ton per hectare. But it depends on variety of rice as well. So the method that farmer use is mostly uh, seed forecasting method. It's about only four uh, percent of them using uh, transplanting method. And if we look at the the direct cost, so uh, one hectare of land in Battambang they spend about three hundred thirty-two US dollar. If comparing to uh, to rice farming in Konkan, in Konkan a bit higher, and the higher because of the the labour. And here's the the profitability of a farmer can get from rice farming. So the rice yield they get about uh, 3.7 in Konkan, but it's lower in uh, in in Batambong. And the the gross profit is about 300 in Batambong, but it's about double in in Konkan. So we can see different. Uh, uh, the profitability of uh, rice farming in in Thailand and in Cambodia. 
So we, we explore the input which may uh, uh, moderate it to, to the outcome. So we, we found that only uh, chemical fertilizer are a major input to increase the yield. And very few farmers who are using the organic fertilizer. And we found the pro profitability also uh, significantly related to, to the direct cost. And the relation is not linear. If farmers use a higher amount of, uh, of uh, fertilizer, they may get uh, lower income. So it means that uh, the expense for rice farming cannot higher than about 450 US dollar per, per hectare. So I will uh, look at the organic fertilizer that they use for rice farming. So organic fertilizer actually is uh, limited in in the area which is not significant to the cultivated area. I mean if uh, it means that uh, area is not uh, might be made matter for applying organic matter because they have a limited uh, the organic at their 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 homeland. But the organic fertilizer was negatively corrected to the to the chemical fertilizer application, indicating that if uh, Organic fertilizer available may uh, chemical fertilizer using is less. I mean, if if uh, organic fertilizer available, that amount of uh, chemical fertilizer can be replaced. So for. Uh, for both methods, they use for rye uh, uh, pr production. Uh, for transplanting, for transplanting chemical fertilizer, use less than uh, broadcasting uh, method. Maybe because of uh, uh, broadcasting method may uh, may. Uh, may have uh, more wheat, that's why they try to uh, apply more chemical to, to the field. But transplanting can be control of a smaller area that farmer can manage for weeding. So, broadcasting is the dominant method for uh, rye farming in the northwest of Cambodia. Amount of uh, chemical fertilizer application may be used when the organic uh, fertilizer is available. An amount of organic uh, amount of uh, chemical fertilizer applied to uh, to broadcasting methods is higher than than uh, transplanting, and in in that case, you know, the, the land area of a uh, farmer in the northwest part of, of the country have larger than those who are living in the southern part of, of the country. So one of the reasons that uh, farmers do not have uh, enough labor to, to apply a SOI principle for their, their farming and labor costs become uh, another issue. It's uh, increasing year by year. <laughs> so at the moment, we, you know, we uh, we pay about I think seven in every seven US dollar per one day if we hire one one uh, people to work on our farm. 
So organic fertilizer is little applied and concerned by the farmer for the northwest part of Cambodia. And agricultural uh, grow ecological farming is recommended for sustainable agriculture purpose. And now we are concerning about uh, the curriculum development as well at the university. We are running a master program in sustainable agriculture that may contribute to our society to look at the agroecological practice for the sustainable agriculture. So that's all for my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.